Okay, and our last speaker of the session is Clement Chow. Thanks for your um, attention and the opportunity to present um, this new project looking at ER stress and placenta in my, in my group. Um, it's also nice being the person keeping you from dinner, so I'll keep this, I'll keep this brief. So the, the ER endoplasmic reticulum is this large organelle involved in the synthesis and maturation of proteins, involved in protein folding and transport, the production of phospholipids, as well as the major calcium, in the, in, in calcium store in the cell. And this, this phenomenon called ER stress occurs when misfolded proteins accumulate in the lumen of the ER. And this accumulation of misfolded proteins can happen for all kinds of reasons, some of them listed here, including mutations, abnormal protein modifications, high levels of normal protein production, and the dysregulation of calcium in, in the ER. Now the, the cell needs to respond to the stress, and it responds with this very large complex transcriptional response, which is mainly driven by three different pathways, PERC, IRU1, and ATF6. And together these three pathways turn on hundreds, thousands of genes that are aimed at fixing this misfolded protein problem, clearing the proteins from, from, the, from the ER. And we've previously shown in, in other studies that, that this um, complicated transcriptional response is variable between individuals and a population, and that there's a quite a bit of a complicated um, genetic architecture underlying differences between individuals in this response. And so we think that these, these differences between individuals in this transcriptional response makes, it a, makes ER stress a very, very important modifier of, of disease. We see lots of variation in a population, so it makes it um, quite, quite a bit a good candidate as, as a modifier. And um, what, what I've listed here are all different kinds of diseases that are impacted by the ER stress response. And what's most important to know is that it's been shown mostly through mouse models that if you alter the ER stress response in any one of these kind of general disorders, that you can really affect the outcome of the disease just by changing the, how, the, how the organism responds to ER stress. And so I think that, that that's a pretty good reason to think that, that we, we should pursue this as a modifier in a, in a number of different disease, diseases. And when we're doing that in my group, um, what I'm going to focus on today is its role in reproduction and development. So the placenta is a really interesting organ. It acts as the, as the interface between the mother and the fetus, and um, the mother delivers oxygen, nutrients, and hormones through the blood supply, through the placenta into the fetus, and waste and carbon dioxide is, is removed from the fetus through the, through, the, through the blood supply as well. Now, this is um, a very complicated organ, and we don't have the time to kind of discuss all the biology behind the placenta. But what's most important to know is that there's a number of kind of events that can cause placental dysfunction during pregnancy. And what's really interesting and striking to us is that almost every, in every case, there's a signature of ER stress in the placenta when they look at um, placentas from mothers who have given birth. And, and some of these conditions include interuterine growth restriction, or IUGR, preeclampsia, and even um, high-altitude high hypoxia exposure during pregnancy. Women who have um, adapted to, to sea level and then they move up to Utah where I am at 5,000 feet, and then they give birth up there, you find um, uh, signs of ER stress in their placenta. So, so these are all human studies, and the problem with human studies is that we only get to see the placenta at, at birth, which is the end point. And so that makes this a very, these, all these studies very correlative, and we don't really know what it, what it means for development and the function of the placenta. And, and while all these different placental dysfunctions show signatures of ER stress, they're all very complicated, and they all have different etiologies that are quite unrelated to each other. So this, this is a problem for understanding how, how this response might affect placental biology. So, so we wanted to know, you know, what is the isolated effect of ER stress on placenta function? And, um, and then the natural model we turn to is the mouse, being the mouse session. Um, and, and our experimental design is, is really simple. We take um, C57 black 6 females, and we perform time matings with black 6 males. And at, at E14.5, we inject the pregnant females with tunicomycin or a control injection. Tunicomycin is a very commonly used drug that inhibits glycosylation in the ER, resulting in massive protein misfolding and a very strong ER stress response. 24 hours after injection, we dissect out placentas, collect a bunch of tissues, bank, bank everything from the females, and process those placentas for RNA-seq and small RNA-seq sequencing. And everything is done in triplicate that I'm showing you. 
So the first thing we looked at was the most obvious thing to look at was what genes are upregulated by ER stress in the placenta. Here's a plot showing you log two fold change between stress and control samples and the expression level. And in red, I'm showing you genes that are upregulated one and a half fold or more in an FDR of 5%. And when we looked at um, um, go when we did a go analysis looking at enriched gene functions in, in, in these group of red genes, we are not surprised to find that response to ER stress and, and other ER stress related functions are, are enriched. And these genes, of course, function in the endoplasmic reticulum and, and, and its membrane. So this is a nice um, proof of principle that, that, it, that it's working fine. So the next thing we did was we took these upregulated genes and compared them to another data set that we previously published on. We, we previously looked at um, ER stress in, in black 6 MEFs, muscle embryonic fibroblasts, and so we compared the upregulated genes in the placenta to those MEFs, that MEF data set that we generated earlier. And what we found was a pretty large overlap between the two data sets. We find that about a quarter of each of the data, each of the, each of the sets of upregulated genes are, are overlapping. And when we look at these 92 genes in, in the overlap, we find that there's a very strong correlation in their, in their fold response between placentas and and muscle membranic fibroblasts, and you know these mess are in a dish, and this placenta is in a living living animal, and we still get a very similar response between between the between the treatments. And when we look at the identity of these genes, um, we find that they include all the canonical ER stress response genes, and this really makes up the core response. And these include XBP1, ATF3, and, and, and BIP. Okay, so there's this strong core, core response between different tissues, but, but you'll also appreciate that on either side of this Venn diagram are about 300 genes that are unique to the upregulated up response between the placenta and the MEFs. And we previously showed that the MEFs have an enrichment for inflammatory-related genes. There's a very strong upregulation of inflammation in the MEFs when we induce ER stress, and you can see some of those categories here. When we looked at the upregulated genes in the placenta, we didn't see any enrichment of inflammation. In fact, we don't really see any of these inflammation genes upregulated in the placenta at all, which is quite striking. What we did find was enrichment of non-coding RNA metabolism in the, in, in the placenta, and we've never kind of seen this before when we induce ER stress in other cell types or, or, t or tissues. So that's quite striking. That's a very, very big difference in how these different tissues respond to ER stress. So the next thing we looked at was what are the genes that are downregulated by ER stress in the placenta? And these genes often get ignored. I think they get, a, they get kind of passed over because everyone thinks upregulation is more important than downregulation, especially in, in, in this particular stress response. So I'm here, I'm showing you again in red genes that are downregulated one and a half fold or more in an FDR of 5%. And when we looked at enrichment of these genes, we're, we're fairly surprised to find that they were very strongly enriched for lipid me metabolism, cholesterol homeostasis, and lipid transport, and other kind of lipid-related genes. And what's even more striking is when we looked at where these genes function, their gene products function in, in exosomes and, and vesicles. So it seems like we're perturbing either exosome biogenesis or vesicle biogenesis in the placenta by um, inducing ER stress. Just to show you an example of um, what kind of lipid metabolism genes are downregulated in the placenta by ER stress, we found that a full third of the apolipoproteins are, are downregulated almost twofold or more in the placenta by ER stress. And um, here I'm just showing you their, their downregulation profiles here and quite, quite, a, quite, a, quite large downregulation and a pretty, pretty strong um, significance, significance value. So, so this is. Um, Again, showing you just almost a third of this whole class of genes is downregulated by ER stress, which is, I think, quite striking. Just to kind of hammer, hammer home how important kind of each individual tissue's response is, we compared downregulated genes in the placenta to that MEF data set again, and we found almost no overlap between the downregulated genes and between the two tissues, really, again, indicating that there's a very strong tissue-specific response to, to the stress. And we previously showed that the MEFs have no enrichment for any kind of function in, in, in these, um, these downregulated genes. And again, we sh I just showed you that the downregulated genes in the placenta are enriched from lipid metabolism and exosome function. So what do exosomes have to do with placental function? In fact, exosomes are quite important for placentas. Um, exosomes are secreted membrane-bound vesicles, and um, they're thought to, to regulate the function of target cells. In this very simple diagram, you can see that a number of, of thoughts of what, what exosomes might be doing to target tissues or, or, or cells. 
Now, the ER is incredibly important to exosome biogenesis. It's important for producing the proteins that are often loaded into exosomes, as well as several of the membrane components that are important for exosome function. And what's important to us is that the pl placenta-derived exosomes can be found in maternal circulation, and these exosomes contain proteins, lipid, mRNAs, and, and microRNAs, and um, so they can contain lots of different things, really. And, um, and what's even more striking is that more and more people are realizing that, that when you look at the blood from, from mothers who are undergoing preeclampsia or, or have been diagnosed with IUGR, they, they find that there are changes in exosome um, numbers and also the components that are within the exosomes in these, in these patients. And, that, and that's actually one reason why exosomes are being, being developed as biomarkers for some of these placental conditions. So there seems to be an important connection between placental function and exosomes, and, and we think that ER stress plays an important role in altering, altering exosome biogenesis in the placenta. Okay, so, um, so the, plac the placenta and, and microRNAs are kind of, so the next thing we did was we looked at microRNA, microRNA profiles in, in, these, in these placentas. And one of the reasons why we did this was because microRNAs are gaining more and more um, kind of interest in the placenta field because of, especially because of, of the, the finding that, you know, microRNAs are, are being found in, in the exosomes and they might be a potential, potential biomarker as well. On the other hand, there's very little known about how ER stress affects microRNA regulation and, and kind of global microRNA changes what happens under the stress response. So what we did was we, we performed the microRNA seq on these same, same samples I described. And this is pretty new data, like three days old. So I'm going to um, just give you a snapshot of some of the interesting things I've, we've, we've already been able to, to kind of capture from this data. And so this is just a this is just showing you the top 10 most upregulated microRNAs and downregulated microRNAs in the placenta by ER stress. These are all significantly up or downregulated. And you'll see that they're quite strongly up or downregulated over, over twofold, twofold or, or, or more, really indicating that there's a, quite a robust response in the microRNA um, ohm, transcriptome of the microRNA by, by, um, by, by ER stress. And, um, and, you know, this data, like I said, is, is quite new and we're still digging into it, but one of the really interesting preliminary findings we've, we've come across is, is that um, microRNA704 and its targets are both upregulated by ER stress in the placenta. And I'll show you, show you what I mean. So microRNA704 is upregulated over twofold in the placenta by ER stress. And when we looked at its um, predicted targets, we found that 29 of microRNA 704's predicted targets are upregulated by ER stress as well. So this is interesting because kind of the simplistic model is that if a microRNA goes up, its targets go down. But there's already evidence that that's not always the case. Here are four of, um, four of those targets. These are all canonical ER stress genes, XBP1 and BIP, for example. They're all upregulated one and a half fold to almost fourfold by, by ER stress in addition to the upregulation of this microRNA by over twofold, really suggests that, that there's really complex regulation between ER stress, microRNAs, and, and uh, the genes that are aimed at the resolving the ER stress in, in the cell. So I just want to conclude by um, reemphasizing that ER stress induces placenta-specific responses, and I think that this is an important lesson to, to people who study ER stress because oftentimes I think it gets swept under the rug that there's very large tissue-specific responses to the stress. Um, ER stress also potentially dysregulates lipid metabolism and exosome biogenesis in the placenta, and I think that this is going to be an incredibly interesting avenue of, of, of research moving forward. And finally, there's, there's likely a complex regulation between microRNAs and, and ER stress, at least, at least in the placenta. And so this brings me back to my original question of how does the isolated ER stress response relate to placental function? And we're hoping that as we, as we isolate this response in, in, in the mouse placenta, we can start dissecting out the causes and effects of some of, the, some of the problems that we see in these different placental dysfunctions. just want to end by um, acknowledging my, my group at the University of Utah. This work was hatched when I was a postdoc with Andy Clark at Cornell University. It's done in collaboration with Mark Robertson's group at the vet school there. Um, this was started with a seed grant from Cornell Center for Reproductive Genomics. 
My lab is new, it's less than a year old, so if you're interested in ER stress, genetic variation, these things that we work on, um, please find me afterwards or contact me. Or if you just like working in a lab that has this view every day, then come join my lab. And um, one more um, plug for a poster we have during the poster session looking at another disorder of, of the ER stress response. Thank you. Any questions? We have one right here. Hey, Clement. Hey. Um, so you showed in the MEFs you had this really unique response. And in vivo, does tunicomycin cross the placenta? And could you use those embryos themselves to kind of validate some of that or explore that? Yeah, more? yeah. We, we, have, we have all that. And we have plans to look at the embryos in quite a bit of detail, yeah. And I had a question. Sure. Um, is there another way that you could induce the ER response besides the tunicomycin to rule out any sort of uh, effects that are tunicomycin specific and not ER response? Uh, you're one of the, my reviewers, are you? Uh, but yeah. if, I, if I was, yeah. I would have said that, yeah. but I, I wasn't. Um, there, are, there are about three drugs that people use often to induce ER stress. They do it very differently and have quite a bit different effects besides the ER stress response. So um, we could. Um, but I think that, it, I, th I actually think it has quite limited, um, limited value in comparing the drugs because of how different they induce the stress. And so, you know, the caveat is this is ER stress induced by this drug at, at a level that probably never happens physiologically, but it's really difficult to do it in, in mice easily otherwise. Yeah. All right, great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And on behalf of, of the other bill, uh, thanks everyone for the session and we'll see you in a few hours.